Hello everyone, this will be the presentation for project number six, the Venus Wind Harvester. The group members include myself, Saul Loza, as well as my team members, Kevin Pan, Oscar Lopez, Zacharias Garza, Jonathan Serrano, and Anthony Zaguirre. The team's faculty advisor is Dr. Jim Kuo, and the client is Dr. Jonathan Sauter with JPL. I will be presenting the first section of this presentation, in which I will be introducing the project itself. Why Venus? What is the importance of studying the planet? Well, Venus is Earth's other neighbor and is commonly referred to as its sister planet, and yet it has remained as a relatively unknown entity, for it has been largely neglected for the past few decades. In fact, the last time any equipment was sent over to the planet was in the 1980s. This was through the Soviet Union's Venera program, which began in 1961 with its final mission taking place in 1983. Although it did launch various missions to the planet's surface in its lifespan, none of these missions lasted any substantial amount of time. Most only last in a few minutes, and some only last in a few seconds. This makes it difficult to categorize any of these missions as successes, and, but they did result in useful data collection. Since the program's closing, all the research on the, for the planet has been conducted through the use of satellite imagery. And actually, that satellite imagery detected possible signs of microbial life sometime last year. Uh, this alone, but in combination with the fact that the planet remains a relative mystery, makes the planet a, a worthy candidate to be studied. The team is taking part in the NASA JPL Venus mission uh, named Autonomous Rover for Extreme Environments, or ARI for short. The, the project was actually proposed by the team's liaison, Dr. Jonathan Sauter, back in 2016. This project proposes to send a rover to the surface of Venus in the near future. The main challenge that this rover cha faces, although there are various unique challenges to this project, is the extreme temperatures of the planet. The average surface temperature of Venus is 425 degrees Celsius. This makes most modern technology and electronics virtually useless for this project, for they won't last any substantial amount of time. And making the system itself nearly a completely mechanical one. The extreme temperatures in combination with the uh, fact that there is a powerful greenhouse effect and therefore plenty of cloud coverage on the planet, this makes uh, photovoltaic technology virtually useless for the, its efficiency drops to unacceptable levels. Therefore, another power source is required, and this alternative energy source was chosen to be a wind turbine for there's evidence of being of there being uh, Venusian, strong enough Venusian winds to power the rover. The team itself has been tasked with designing this turbine for the future Venus rover. The parameters and requirements for this project are that the the full scale version of the turbine will be 2.7 meters in diameter and half a meter thick. The mass of the turbine itself has to be under 45 kilograms and it needs to be able to create, generate 9 watts of power at Venusian winds moving at 0.6 meters per second. And the, to make ensure that this power is generated, the desired efficiency is 40 percent efficient mechanical efficiency or higher. The, at the proposed landing site, it has been estimated that the wind, Venusian winds vary between 0.3 meters per second to 1.3 meters per second, and the budget for the team for this year is just about $1,000. Now I'll be passing over control to my team member, Kevin Pan, who will be presenting the methodology for this project. In our design methodology, a turbine design is first proposed. The efficiency is then characterized using BEM in two dimensions, and if it shows potential, then it will move on to CFD simulations. CFD simulations are conducted in three dimensions and will further validate the results. If the turbine design shows promising results, then it will be manufactured and tested. Verifying experimental with analytical model will allow us to see how the turbine behaves under real world conditions. The process starts over as necessary modifications are made to ensure better performance. This project has been four years in the making, and our team started off with the experimental testing. Prior teams have started with testing out turbine designs, optimizing them, and testing in the wind tunnel. Due to the limitations of the wind tunnel not being able to reach higher subsonic speeds, tests were shifted to water testing, as water is closer to viscous effects on Venus. And now I will be passing it on to Jonathan to talk about the experimental testing. 
Based on the problems encountered during the testing of previous designs, it was determined that in order to gather useful data, the turbine design was to be tested under varying fluid speeds. In addition, it was to be stationary in order, in order to allow the flowing fluid to be perpendicular to the turbine area. Therefore, the best solution found was to test in an endless pool, which would allow for controlled and varying fluid speeds, in addition to allow the turbine blade area to stay perpendicular to the flowing fluid. In order to determine the efficiency of the turbine design, a, a method to measure the velocity of the, fl of the fl uh, fluid flowing through the turbine area was required and also a method to acquire the torque being produced and a method to measure the RPM of the motor pulley. The image on the left shows the left profile of the CAD design. A, an aluminum post circled in red was placed through the mounting plate in order to submerge the turbine. The turbine shaft was connected to the motor shaft via a belt and pulley shown in green. The top right image shows a close-up of the equipment on the mounting plate since it was required to measure the static torque of the motor, the motor needed to rotate freely about its axis. This was done by supporting the motor above the mounting plate using roller bearings. Um, for the rear, a roller bearing, flange mount, and shaft was used to support the rear of the motor, um, shown in the bottom right image, and a roller bearing to support the front shaft and pulley. Support structures are shown in yellow circles uh, were placed below each roller bearing to allow the motor to be fixed perpendicular to the area of the turbine blades below. The torque arm was designed to fit around the diameter of the motor in order to record the perpendicular force applied by the torque arm onto the load cell. The load cell was placed on a support structure as well to be level with the torque um, arm. Although not part of the design, the CAD design, a flow meter was used to measure the fluid velocities in front of the turbine area during each trial. In addition, a tachometer was used to obtain the RPM of the motor pulley, which was placed three millimeters from the pulley. On the screen, the CAD and testing setups are shown. As one can see, the testing setup is very similar to the CAD design, although, um, a stationary design, it was uh, made to allow the setup to be moved back and forth along the length of the pool. This would allow to test at varying distances from the exit of the fluid propulsion system. In addition, the turbine was submerged at the appropriate height from the bottom of the pool and placed at the center of the pool to allow the formation of a fully developed fl uh, fluid profile and boundary layer. Next, Kevin will be introducing the results. Before we get into the experimental results, it is crucial to understand TSR. TSR is the tip speed ratio. It is the ratio between the turbine tip rotation speed over the wind velocity. The higher the tip speed ratio, the faster the rotation of the turbine. Here we have a mechanical efficiency versus TSR graph. The TSRs range from 5 to 12, where the mechanical efficiency ranged from 7 to 46%. And to put this into perspective, the highest theoretical mechanical efficiency of a turbine, also known as Betts limit, is around 59% efficient. To validate the experimental results, Zachariah and Anthony will be going over the analytical validation. Blade element momentum theory, which from here on will be referred to as BEM theory, is used in the analysis of wind turbines to relate the shape of a variable geometry blade to a rotor's potential to extract power from the wind. This is accomplished by analyzing the various forces at each section as a function of blade geometry, that is the angles relative to the rotor plane and the airfoil profile at the given blade section. This sectional analysis ends up expressed as a function of lift and drag coefficients and the angle of attack alpha as seen in figure 11. Alpha is the angle between the section cord and the relative wind velocity. From these coefficients, it becomes possible to define the normal and tangential forces at each annular section as a function of flow angle, denoted as phi in figure 11. In our case, we're working to optimize the torque output or the tangential forces. The analysis of each section is then combined to model the entire blade. An example of the sectioning of a turbine blade is seen in figure 12. 
MATLAB code was used to apply BEM theory to the analysis of our turbine. This gave us an idea of turbine performance and was used to design the test platform and to verify the experimental results from testing. Uh, table 2 shows a sample of these results at a single fluid velocity across a range of RPMs. Uh, and these experimental results are side by side with the values expected based on BEM theory. This comparison allows us to confirm the trends we see in our data, which here we see that our turbine is actually performing more efficiently at lower RPMs, which means it's performing more efficiently and producing more power when there's a greater load on the turbine. The BEM code was also used to verify the results from CFD simulations. And I will now pass it on to Anthony to talk more about the CFD simulations done on this turbine. Hi, my name is Anthony, and I'll be going over the CFD analysis slide. For CFD modeling, the simulations team ended up using ANSYS Flint, which is a finite volume solver. The turbine and flow model that is being used is K Omega SST. The model was specifically selected because it is best suited for near wall flow regions. For our designs, two control enclosures were created. The first is a cylindrical enclosure that will be the rotating domain of the turbine. The second enclosure is where the turbine will be housed. The dimensions for that enclosure is 2.5 meters both length and width and 4 meters across. The current design being utilized has a little over 11 million elements. The simulations team is still in the process of accumulating data and will require further time to show proper results. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Oscar Lopez and I will be going over the revisions to our, our water test bed. Right off the bat, during our winter testing, we had ran into a handful of issues. One of the issues we ran into was our, our uncharacterized motor. While this doesn't seem like much, the motor that we had was donated, so we weren't certain to its power output or its condition. So this led to uncertainty we wish to address. The next issue we ran into was slipping of the pulley. While the pulley was simply attached by being press fitted onto the motor shaft, we learned from the winter testing this was not a secure attachment. What we noticed was that the pulley was slipping between the shaft and this would only deviate our data further. Another issue was the load bearing for our shaft. What we noticed when we disassembled was that the shaft for our old arc molder had a D shaft opposed to a cylindrical shaft. While it fit inside the roller bearing, this was not a smooth one and this would cause problems in also further skewing the data. So we knew refinement was necessary. One of the things we opted to do was update the data acquisition. We went with a data acquisition system to record several things in real time. Um, our slipping issue was also addressed. This was corrected by having a flange mount so we can firmly clamp on the shaft as well as bolt onto the pulley so there is no slipping from that area. We went with a new motor that was characterized and was new so we know the condition of the motor. Along with that, we had to make a new motor housing for our setup, as well as update the moment arm to accommodate the dimensions of our newer motor. As you can see in the CAD here, we have the new updated test setup and we have the DAC as well as our sensors, which are gonna be um, obtaining our force, our RPMs, as well as the power generated from the motor. Here's our final bill of materials. Many of the items were inherited from previous students working on the same project from prior semesters. Some were donated and we had a couple that were fabricated via 3D printing. We have the bottom, our purchase list, which were the parts that we had to obtain to update our setup. And what we noticed is that we had $293 still well beneath our budget. As can be seen here in this following slide, we have the updated motor assembly at via CAD file. And this was this proved to be useful because it gave us the blueprints on how to fabricate or how to mock up an act, the actual test bed setup. As we can see on the photo on the right, this proved to be a fairly similar design to the CAD file. This was fairly straightforward and we took our time to mock it all up to make sure everything was as close, if not is to specifications. Now I will pass you over to Anthony who will who will address the conclusions to our project. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anthony and I'm doing conclusion. 
In conclusion, major promise was shown for the efficiency of the current turbine design. The best performance recorded so far was 10.3 watts of power and 46.1% efficiency. This was taken at a TCP ratio of 7.458 and an average flow velocity of 0 0.534 meters a second. In addition, the simulation tools the team are currently developing are getting closer to modeling experimental results, which would allow us to better judge any turbine design and improve upon it if needed. Furthermore, the design of the new rotor assembly is built even better than before and will allow the team and any future team to collect more accurate data. I'll be passing now to Sao with future plans. The following team to take up this project will begin it at the very much the same point as this team did in terms of the design cycle. They will begin by continuing to improve the water test bed setup. And the, the primary aspect that hasn't been improved to the point desired or verified is its braking system. The team has been moving forward with an electrical braking system, but it is also thought that a mechanical braking system would be very beneficial to have. This would allow for a primary and secondary system braking system to be in place. They will also need to optimize or, depending on the results, completely redesign the wind turbine blades. The CFD and BM simulation environments will help in this endeavor, for they will be very beneficial when attempting to predict future and possible turbine blade behavior. They will also need to continue conducting water testing and in this same endeavor it would be very beneficial if they were able to find a frequently more available water testing environment however this will prove very difficult for they would need a endless pool or a water tunnel and this is for the turbine blades need to be stationary and uh, they need to have sustainable and reliable incoming water flow thank you for your time and this is the presentation and we will be more than happy to answer any questions and here are the references for this presentation.